What up people, today we are gonna to talk about calories. Okay, so I got a mechanical engineering undergraduate degree and I studied thermodynamics and I love the concept of calories. I love the first law of thermodynamics. It's so beautiful intellectually. It's always a zero sum game energy and always has to balance with energy out because energy cannot be created or destroyed. On paper, calories are awesome, beautiful, love it. There's a couple problems with calories, however, when we try to apply them to humans and diet. And let's talk about some of these problems. Okay, so you have calories in, which is the food you're eating, and then you have calories out. Now, calories out is a little more complicated. Calories out is comprised of resting energy expenditure, which is your basal metabolic rate, and then non-resting energy expenditure, which is divided into non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is just fidgeting and moving, the thermic effect of food, which depends, of course, on what you're eating, and then exercise activity thermogenesis, which is how much exercise you're doing. The problem with energy out is that you don't really know any of these and you can't really calculate any of these. For example, what's your basal metabolic rate? Well, you have no clue. You have absolutely no clue. You can sort of guess, you can sort of estimate. It will be wrong. All estimates are wrong, some are useful. When we try to guess what people's basal metabolic rate is and then we put them in a metabolic ward, we're usually off and we have to adjust it. So you don't know your basal metabolic rate. What about your non-exercise activity thermogenesis? Well, you have absolutely no clue what that is. I mean, that's completely unknown and unknowable and you'll never know and none of us will ever know. So it's really cool intellectually, it's cool on paper, but you just have no idea. Thermic effective food. That is infinitely variable. There are so many factors there that there's just absolutely no way to calculate what it is. You'll never know. You can't know. Exercise, exercise activity thermogenesis, well, you can wear a Fitbit, you can wear your Apple Watch, and you can kind of see how many steps you took, but they're wildly inaccurate, and you really just kind of don't know. So basically, you have no clue on the energy outside. Now, the energy inside is just about as bad. You really don't know exactly how many calories you're eating. Even if you weigh everything out to the gram and look at all the labels and look at the best tables we have for calories for individual foods, there are so many factors like raw versus cooked and cooking styles and uh, individual variances in digestion. And there's just like, there's an infinite number of variables there and you'll never ever be accurate. You can kind of come close. You know, you're gonna be off by like 20%, but let's face it. If you overate by 20% of calories in a year, you're gonna gain 30 pounds. So it's not really exact enough to be that helpful. So you really don't know how many calories you're eating and you really don't know how many calories you're burning. Well, it kind of doesn't matter because if you're overweight, you know that you're supposed to eat less calories and burn more calories. And that's how we got eat less, move more, right? So that part, you know, you know you need to eat less calories and you know you need to expend more calories. Not super helpful. The second problem with calories is that what happens to those calories kind of depends on what those calories are. For example, let's say you eat 2000 calories a day right now and we're gonna clone you off and now there's two of you. One of you is going to eat 2000 calories a day of pure protein, just egg whites and white fish and whey powder. The other one of you is going to eat 2,000 calories a day of just carbs and fats, donuts and candy bars. What is going to happen to your two clones going forward in time? What is their body composition going to look like? How are they gonna feel? What's going to happen to their energy outside of the equation? There are gonna be some radical differences there, even at the exact same caloric intake. So it's really not that helpful to track calories. But here's the third problem with calories. This is the big one. Let's say you knew exactly what your energy out was. Let's say you knew exactly what your basal metabolic rate was, and you knew exactly what your non-resting energy expenditure was, all the way down to the calorie. And let's say that you also knew the exact caloric content of all the food you are eating. You knew the exact calories of what you ate yesterday and last week. Okay, now I want you to eat all the same foods you're eating, but just half as much. Yeah, just cut your calories in half, great. Just eat half what you've been eating. 
boom, you'll your weight will go down, you'll lose all the weight you want, and it, that's gonna be great. Half the calories. So there's a huge problem with that. What's gonna happen to you if you try to eat the same food you're eating now and cut your calories in half? Well, I'll tell you, you're gonna be starving out of your mind. And that is because you are eating to satiety right now of the foods that you're currently eating. And so trying to eat half the calories is never gonna work. When it comes to dieting, there's two basic approaches. That's focusing on how much you're eating, calories, and then focusing on what you're eating, the quality of the food you're eating, the quality of those calories, the macro breakdown of those foods. It makes far more sense to focus on what you're eating rather than how much you're eating. It's all about the long-term satiety per calorie that you're eating. If you eat foods with a low satiety per calorie, you're gonna automatically overeat calories. If you eat foods with a high satiety per calorie, which is mostly protein and fiber, you're going to automatically eat less. Okay, so hopefully that gave some of you something to think about. I hope that was helpful. I wrote a book with William Schufeld called The PE Diet. It's available at thepediet.com. And in this book, we focus on what to eat rather than how much to eat. Check it out. I hope that's useful to some of you. Peace out.